Hey everyone and welcome back to the channel. In today's video we went southwest of our hometown towards Fording Bridge, close to the New Forest in Hampshire, and to a picturesque and interesting Roman villa named Rockbourne. Join us for a visit inside the well-maintained museum full of beautiful artefacts that were unearthed from thousands of years ago and walk around the site that was once full of life and wealth. Beginning life, the villa starts out as a simple Iron Age roundhouse and is soon after replaced by the first phase of the Roman villa. This phase comes from the influence of Rome that seeped into Britain and made its way across the different barbarian tribes. Through and through thorough excavation work, we were able to identify the multiple stages of development that the villa had gone through before the occupants were happy with their home. And what is really amazing is the more and more different additions that were added to the villa, including the multiple bathing areas and the huge dining area that we'll see soon. The constant expansion would have suggested that the owners were wealthy, but also that they were desperate to keep up with the Roman architectural traditions of the time. If the elaborately patterned mosaics, enormous bath suites and architectural beauty were not enough to imply a wealthy household, then the immense coin hoard found within the villa surely does. Over 7,000 coins, dating between 295 to 305 AD, were found in a two-handled New Forest-style pot that was buried just outside one of the villa's walls. There are two theories about why so much money was left on the ground. One is that there was a financial struggle and they were hiding the money away for safekeeping in case they had to flee. It is thought that the large hoard could have been left as a gift to a god or a goddess for good fortune, which is a possibility because it was stored in a decorated pot and packed with organic material. During the excavations in 1965, outside the remains of a large dining room, an adult skeleton was found buried face down in a shallow grave. The reason why this man should have been buried at the villa is unknown, as is the date of his burial, although it is likely that he was buried after Roman occupation had ended. The full skeleton can be seen on display in the museum. Though much of the excavated remains have been filled in to prevent weakening, enough still remains to give us an idea of how the complex looked. The major structures have been outlined in gravel, so that we're able to identify the outline of the buildings. When visiting a Roman villa, you are most likely going to see a hypercourse. This is a type of heating that was developed by the Romans, who used it in warm and hot rooms of the baths, but also to warm private houses. It works by creating an open space below a floor and heated by gases from a fire below that allowed the passage of hot air to heat through the room above. So although you can't see the system of pipes that would have heated the walls and the upper rooms, parts of the hypercourse, which would have warmed the mosaic floor of one of the villa's luxurious bath suites, still remain. The villa was actually discovered in 1942 by a farmer named Morley Hewitt. He discovered the remains of the mosaic floor by accident, with small pieces of oyster shells and Roman tiles that were found when he was trying to dig out a ferret in the fields. So upon this discovery, he purchased the lands and began conducting excavations to reveal the incredible villa as we see it today. Other mosaics can be found throughout the villa, 
which have been carefully maintained ever since its initial excavation in 1942. However, in the 5th century AD, at the decline of the Villa's use, some of the mosaics were intentionally broken up, and it's not fully understood why. But a theory is that this could have been done to ruin the value of the flooring, so that it became worthless to any potential robbers. And mosaics found in the East Bath Suite show intricate geometric patterns. Although some of the mosaic is missing, there is enough of it to understand what the full picture would have looked like though. Mosaics such as these would have been laid by a skilled professional and would have no means been a cheap job. Rockbourne is home to some immaculate mosaics, typical of Roman Britain, and they can tell us a lot more than just being decorative. We can see how the layouts of some of the rooms would have looked thanks to the mosaics, specifically in the dining area, where the best preserved mosaics of Rockbourne are actually found. The Romans typically did not want to waste money on the mosaics if they were going to be covered up with bulky furniture. So in the triclinium, there are blank areas of mosaic showing where benches and tables would have actually been placed, leaving the expensive artwork still visible to be shown off to guests and appreciated by the landlord. A grand set of baths was built on new ground, detached from the living quarters, which was cleverly thought out as the fire was always involved with heating. It was decorated with mosaic tiles in the 4th century, and the surrounding walls would have been covered with finely painted plaster. At some point in time, a cold plunge was built, destroying part of the mosaic. So this was then realigned at least twice, and the hypercourse were filled in and cemented over, as the rooms were used more for accommodation. It was in this area itself that Morley unearthed the first sightings of the villa, revealing the very impressive eight-pointed star of the central pavement. We know that the villa would have been a high status building, as not every Roman family had a villa. We are also fortunate in understanding its surroundings and can see that it was possible that the wealth of this household could have come from the trading of resources to markets on the hill fort, and possibly across a wider area. We can see this through the discovery of an ancient Greek jar that would have had a large oval body and two handles on the side. Amazingly, this is something that you can see inside the museum, on their displays. But this would have been used to transport heavy quantities of wine, olive oil and fish sauce as it was a Roman delicacy. The history here is long and extensive, with many different phases of construction and over 400 years of use. The great thing about this site is that they have beautifully displayed the importance of this site throughout its time. After being passed down through the family lines and brought out by many different people, it was of course always maintained, renovated and loved by all of its owners. A garden had been placed where they believed one of the gardens would have been here at the villa. It's not to the exact layout, but it would have had a place for growing vegetables, as well as fruit and of course herbs for medicinal purposes. Like with many other Roman gardens, this would have had beautiful shrubs and flowers that were arranged in a way that could have been used for a shaded area. There are so many unanswered questions about this immense villa. Why was it suddenly abandoned and left to the elements? What were the people preparing for when they buried the coin hoard? 
but these questions are even more reasons to go and find out and discover for yourselves. Another really great thing about visiting Rockbourne is that with the purchase of your ticket, which is under £5 for an adult, you can return as many times as you like throughout the year, with on-site toilets and free hot drinks as well, as well as very knowledgeable and friendly staff that are happy to chat and answer any questions. It really is quite the hidden gem in Hampshire. One thing also to note is that they're now shut for the winter, but we would really love to encourage you to visit when you're in the Hampshire area next year. So if you've enjoyed watching our video this week, please be sure to hit that like button, click the notification bell and consider supporting us by subscribing to the channel. Thank you so much to our Patreons, we appreciate you supporting us and a big thank you to everyone choosing to watch the video. We'll see you in the next one, till next time.